Hey, and welcome to Review in FX. In my last few videos, I've been showing how to use After Effects Advanced 3D Renderer to make a planet, bad clouds, atmosphere, and a ring. And the truth is, it's all a lot of effort with workarounds due to the limitations. I've had a few comments along the lines of, why didn't you use Blender? And my stock answer is that Blender is a steep learning curve. Although once you've got the basics down, it becomes relatively easy to use. But there are other free options. Video Copilot's Orb and Cinema 4D Lite, which comes bundled with After Effects. So let's compare them. I've already done tutorials for Planets in Orb and C4D Lite and Natively. So the bulk of this video will be Blender, but then I'll try to break down each's strengths. And it would be great to hear from you too. Here's Blender and this is version 4.3.2 and I'll just draw a box to highlight the cube, light and camera, and hit delete. Then I'll go to add, mesh, UV sphere. And before I click off, this is the only chance I'll get to numerically set anything about the sphere. I'll expand, add UV sphere, and I'll set the segments to 96 and the rings to 96. Apparently multiples of 16 ensure even distribution. But you can still see the segments, so I'll right click on the sphere and choose Shade Auto Smooth. So that's our planet body. To texture it, switch to the shading menu. And apologies to everyone who has watched my recent AE Planet tutorial, it's the same starting point. Select the Materials option and click New. Name the material Planet, as it helps keep things organized. You'll see in the Shading tabs node editor that you have two panels, Principal BSDF and material output. If you don't see anything, try tapping the home key to recenter the nodes. Go to add texture, image texture. You can also hold shift and tap A to search for texture, but I think it's handy to know where things are in the menu. You can now click open and load in your planet texture map. For comparison's sake, I'm using the same texture map I made in the earlier tutorial. You can also drag in textures from File Explorer and it will create image textures for you. So I'll do that for the specular and bump maps. On the original texture map, click and drag from the color pin to the base color pin on the principal BSDF node thingy. And select this icon to see the texture in action. And now link the specular's color pin to the roughness pin. And if I angle the sphere just right, you can see there's a bit of a difference. This is possibly more pronounced when we did it in AE. For the bump map, we can't link this to the normal pin, as it's not a normal map. But we can add a bump node in between. Hopefully you can see I can click and drag these node panels around the area to make space and can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. The bump node is in vector, but again, shift A to search if you're not sure. Link the image bumps color to height and the bumps node right hand normal to normal on the principal BSDF. So that's quite extreme. Drop the strength down to 0.1. And that also helps with the land reflections. Incidentally, I'm moving around the screen by holding the middle mouse button. But if I also hold shift, then I move rather than orbit. Now for our clouds layer. From the outliner panel, double click on the sphere and rename it to planet. Then with it selected, hold control and tap C to copy it and control and tap V to paste the copy. Rename this to clouds. With the object section of the properties panel selected in scale, Set the scale to 1.01 .01 to make the cloud sphere ever so slightly larger. But it's a copy, so it's still using the same material. Switch to the material properties. Click on X to remove the planet materials. Then click on the new button to create a new material. Add in your clouds layer. I got mine from Wikipedia. This time, link the color to alpha and set the base color to white, as by default it's off-white. For the atmosphere, 
duplicate the clouds layer and scale it up to 1.02. and create a new material just like before. This time though, we're not going to use an image. Instead, delete the principled BSDF node and go to Add Shader Volume Scatter. Link its volume to the volume pin. Set the color to a nice bluey color and increase the density to 15. And we can't really see anything. If I switch to the viewport shading option, we just get a black sphere. So let's go to the modeling tab, switch to object mode, and go to add light point light. And in the light properties, set the power to 1000 watts. And if I switch back to viewport shading, it's not much better. That's because I'm in the EV renderer. If I change this to cycles, there, we're getting a better atmosphere. Go to the world properties and change the color to black. This property also affects the lighting, so it's worth doing this for space shots, otherwise spaceships tend to look like the Enterprise in Star Trek V. You'll have also picked up that the longer I leave the image on screen, the less noisy it becomes, as it cycles through all the iterations, I guess. Let's add some stars. Switch to the shading menu. Switch to the world option. And then go to add, texture, noise texture. And link it to the background color pin. Set the scale to 500, but it's not great. From the Add Converter menu, add a color ramp. And if you let go of it when it's above the linking line, it automatically links in the FAC and color pins. Now, you can either drag the black tab on the color ramp to pass halfway, or in pause, short for position, you can set it to 0.65. And then set the white petal, or tab, or whatever it's called, to 0.82. To add some rings, I went to Sketchfab and downloaded a few asteroids. Although this is getting harder to do, as more and more models seem to have that buy me on fab button. Unfortunately, it seems Epic Games monetization is killing the free 3D model market. If you've ever needed a reason to learn 3D, it's this. And I mean, I get it. Everyone deserves to be paid for their work. I choose the option to earn money from ads. But I find it hard to believe professionals are buying these models. The rights issues alone make it not worth it. So putting a price tag on a model, it's pretty much just taking money off kids who are learning. I'm not condemning the creators, just acknowledging that it's a shame. With all these models imported, right click and choose Create Collection and name this Rocks. and place your models inside. Then back in the modeling tab and object mode, choose Add Mesh Torus. And in the Add Torus pop-up, set the major segments to 96 and the minor ones to 32. And increase the major radius to two. And you can leave the minor radius at 0.25. In the properties panel, switch to the object section and decrease the Z scale to 0.2. Z is up in Blender, not Y. Oh, and right click on this and choose Shade Auto Smooth. Before we do anything else, let's duplicate the torus. On the first one, call it Rocky Ring and name the second something like Bandy Ring and use the little eye to turn Bandy Ring off for the moment. It's not my fault it all sounds like a medical diagnosis from the 70s. On the Particles tab, add New. Scroll down to the Render options and change Render As to Collection. 
and drag in your rocks collection. And change the scale to 0.1. And switch to hair in order to see them. And select advanced and that allows you to check the rotation to add more randomness. Now we need to hide the actual torus. On the shading tab, In the node editor, go to Add, Shader, Transparent BSDF, and link its output to the Material Options surface. Now switch the rocky ring off and turn bandy ring on. In its object properties, I set the Z scale right down to 0.01, and let's move the sun up slightly. And here's a texture I got from Planet Pixel Emporium. And here's the node setup. First, we have a texture coordinate. That gives Blender the detailed shape of the object. And we take the UV map and split its values into X, Y, and Z. Then we recombine these values, linking X to Y, Y to X, and Z stays as it is. This new UV map plugs into the image texture which then informs the principal BSDF. There's a direct link to the node map in the description and text guide if you need it. And I've already made separate guides on how to animate in Blender and how to render. So I'll just say, when animating a camera, tapping zero on the number pad lets you see through it. And if you expand this hidden menu, Switch to View, check the box for Camera to View. When you move around, the camera will stick with you. So while it's rendering, I need to have another rant. I have an issue with lazy tutorials, DM. Uh, uh, not really. I actually think Ian Hubert's lazy tutorial series are actually very clever and inspirational. If you're not familiar, Ian rattles through a process in about a minute. He covers all the steps, but quickly. My problem isn't with lazy tutorials, DM. It's with the copycats who have flooded the Blender tutorial search with short form content that doesn't teach. With Ian's, he'll say, create an image texture node and add it to a mix node. But his imitators say something like, mix in some noise to your image texture. And if you don't know how to do that, their node screen will not show it. Look, I get it. Making tutorials is hard. I know. And I know that not all of mine are perfect, but if you're copying somebody else's format, make sure you copy it properly. Otherwise, you're not helping newbies learn Blender. You're just showing off. Okay, rant over. Let's check on the render. And here's the final result. It looks amazing, but the renders took hours. Compare that to these versions and their render times. I think you can make a case for each of the four options. After Effects native advanced 3D renderer is pretty handy, but the shadows thing and baking in atmosphere is a problem. Video Copilot's orb is great, especially as you can do animated textures and atmospheres easily. But it also doesn't do shadows, and while you can't fake it, you have to fake it, and you don't get any interaction with other 3D layers. C4D Lite works, but Maxon has taken away so many features compared to C4D, which feels quite petty. I can't use my 3D mouse, for example, and you can't make layers in textures. But only make. If you download a texture from the content browser, you can edit the layers all you want. Hopefully you get my point, the restrictions seem petty. And of course, there's also Adobe Substance 3D, but that requires a subscription outside Creative Cloud, so I'm choosing to ignore it.
Ultimately, if I take the render from Blender and enhance all the shots in After Effects, I get a step up again, which is kind of the point really. I don't think it's worth picking a side, each has its own advantages. So what do you think? Did this video change your opinion at all? Do you even have an opinion? Or are you just fed up with me talking? <laughs>